In this video, I'm going to be showing you Jan, which is an open source ChatGPT alternative that runs 100% offline on your computer. Now, the nice thing with Jan is there's support for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And to get started, all you have to do is simply download the installer. So the nice thing with this is say if you're not as comfortable with pasting in scripts within your terminal and potentially having to, to debug certain things that you might be not comfortable doing, especially if you're not a programmer, you don't really need to worry about that with this type of implementation. So if you want to get started with these new open source models like the Mistral models or Llama models, but you're not a coder, this is definitely a really good approach for you. So once you have it all downloaded and installed, you'll have an interface like this. So it's built within Electron. So say if you're a TypeScript developer or a JavaScript developer and you're familiar with web technology, you might feel comfortable to contribute to this project. So the nice thing with this is right within here, there are a number of models that are built right within the GUI here. So all you have to do is really just scroll down, find the model that you want to download and click the button and you'll be up and running in no time. So I have a relatively fast internet connection. So my models will download relatively quickly to my machine, but nevertheless, once you have them downloaded, you only need to do that once until you actually uninstall them. So I have two models installed. I have the tiny llama chat model as well as at the top there, you saw the Mistral instruct model. So once you have at least one model installed, you can go ahead and go to the thread tab on the left-hand side here, and you can select the model from the right-hand side here. So here you see the two models that I have downloaded locally. And the other nice thing that is implemented within the project is there is the ability to interact with the OpenAI API directly if you'd like to do that. So. Say if you're experimenting with some of these open source models and you're trying to see if a particular use case can be solved by some of them and you run into some barriers and you just want to maybe compare it to something like GPT-4, you can go ahead and just select GPT-4, run your query, and you can run the comparison right within the same thread there. So that's the other nice thing with this project is you can have a conversation with one model and then you can swap out to another model and that thread will be all within uh, the interface here while you're toggling back and forth between the models. So there is the ability to add in your uh, assistant message or your system message here for the models. So if you want to put a message that is weighted a bit higher, now how well this works on some of these open source models is sort of TBD. I haven't done extensive testing on this, but just as something to note that it's there. So it has a very uh, chat GPT like feel. So if I just say, write a short story. I'll show you what it sort of looks like. So about a person who has to stop time. So this is a very small model. I haven't actually used this one too much, but let's say I want to use the Mistral model. Let's say write a short story. Let's see how well this performs. Now you'll notice that when you actually swap out the models, it does take a moment to actually start that inference server. So while it is pretty quick to swap in between them, when you're actually swapping between models, it might just take a little bit to actually get that all instantiated and running when you're uh, hopping between one and another. So the other thing to note is I'm on a bit of an older machine. So I'm on an Intel base Mac. So I'm on sort of the last generation of Intel base Macs before they started to really just run with their M series chips. So if you're on at least an M1 chip, you are going to get considerably faster results than you see on my screen here. So you see my token speed response is only 2.5 seconds from this model. But mind you, I'm screen recording right now. And like I mentioned, it is an older Mac. So generally speaking, if you're on a machine within the past few years, you are going to get considerably better results than what you're seeing right now on my machine. So the other nice thing here is you do see the CPU usage as well as the memory usage in the right hand side here. And you can also select that from the system monitor here if you want to see it a bit more clearly. And you'll be able to see that the CPU is running almost at 100%. I can hear in the background here that the fans on my computer are starting. So it is really trying to use all the resources to get the responses back. Uh, from my query here. So other things with the, this Jan project that are pretty neat is you can also import models manually from Hugging Face. So I'm not going to be running through that in this video, but just know that that is an option. So there are a lot of different uh, compatible models on Hugging Face that you can just go ahead and explore 
and plug in and use if you'd like. And the other thing with uh, Jan that I thought was great is if you go over to Jan.ai, you can check out their roadmap here. And there's also some interesting plans coming up. So they're planning a mobile app, which I think is a really great use case. I've actually looked at this a couple months ago to see what options are out there for local models running on something like an iPhone 15. And I didn't really see that many options. I think I found one and it wasn't really that great of an implementation. So it will be great to have other players come into this space where you can have these local models directly on something like, say, an iPhone. And the other nice thing with the Jan project is there is going to be support for being able to use this as an endpoint API. So say you have a local application that you want to use and you want to use some of these local models and you want to expose that inference API, there is a roadmap here and you can sort of see the different statuses uh, on their homepage here on how these things have been implemented. So uh, eventually it will be like a full-fledged uh, project where you'll be able to interact with it from the GUI or interact from it uh, with the API. You'll have a lot of different options by the looks of it. So if you really want to get into their roadmap here, you can check it out on GitHub and you can see what's going to be coming out when what they're planning on actually implementing within the project within this epic here that's pretty much it for this video if you found this video useful please like comment share and subscribe and otherwise until the next one